one of the call to actions that I think is really important, and I've learned this through actually observing a variety of different groups, whether it's advocacy groups or the American Academy of Sleep Medicine, is that instead of leading with specific diagnoses, really trying to package into what are the things that should make you just go, huh? And so... Uh, one of the drivers would be saying, instead of talking about obstructive sleep apnea or narcolepsy or idiopathic hypersomnia, let's talk about things that you may relate to. Are you getting the right duration, the right quality, the right timing of your sleep, or are you just having features of dysfunction during the day that are just dissatisfying to you, right? When you put it that way, that is a very approachable conversation starter, mm -hmm. and it allows people to start digging into it you are 100% correct that there are these very, very exquisite barriers when you talk about narcolepsy or idiopathic hypersomnia or even terms like cataplexy. There is such a disconnect. Idiopathic hypersomnia, there's people who have that diagnosis and they still think that someone's waiting to figure out what's wrong with them, right? Mm -hmm. They don't realize that it's actually their medical diagnosis, that that is the condition that they have. So they, they're, they're still trying to understand, okay, well, what is the cause of this, right? Um, and as a field, yeah, we would all love to know the cause of it. 